is Saturday, it is slow Saturday and um, I have a little bit of stuff to show you. I actually had quite a productive week, although I didn't do much of what I planned to do, I still had a very nice productive week. Okay, so, um, this is my Henley, I absolutely love it. Um, I was quite surprised with the mohair content in this. My word is this hot. It is so warm and so cozy that normally I sit in front of a heater because this house is extremely cold. But with this mohair on, the heater is off and I don't have a hat on my head because it is just so warm. It is absolutely fascinating to me that such a thin strand of yarn can have such a massive effect on the finished item. And um, I have to say, I'm very impressed with the feel of the mohair. I was scared that it's gonna be a little bit scratchy because my skin is extremely sensitive. I've got so many touch sensitivity issues that I made the sleeves a little bit shorter so that these little black um, polar neck things that I always wear can come out underneath so that I could keep it away from my wrists and it wasn't necessary. They, it is so soft that it, it doesn't scratch at all and how did I find that out? Well this is a, a design that happened by accident this week. I made a hat um, what happened this week is that on Monday evening, my husband's uncle passed away and we had to go to Bloemfontein in the Free State for the funeral and that was Thursday and um, on Wednesday I thought I would really like to wear my mohair jersey because Bloemfontein is quite cold. So I thought, hmm, I don't have a black, black hat at the moment. I must really make myself a new black hat. I've actually ordered the yarn. So I thought, let me make one with what I've got left in the fingering and the mohair. This, this is Color Spun Fingering Merino and Color Spun's Kid Mohair. Um, and in my mind, I, I had this thing of a hat with a broad ribbing and I started knitting it in the car on the way to the funeral because it's a three four hour drive um, and when I got to this length I thought no I'm gonna double it up because I want the warmth over my ears so I made the ribbing very long and doubled it up and then I did this bit on the top now the crown is quite nice can see um, I refer to this as a prototype I'm gonna make it again but I want this this top little bit to be a little bit more poofy um, it's very nice to wear it sits where it sits um, it doesn't move it's very soft it's very light with the mohair um, and I love it. So this was a design that happened without being planned. It just happened by accident. And I'll speak a little bit more about this design in the question and answer section because somebody asked, how do you do a new design? How does it happen? So I will explain some of it using this hat. So, um, yeah, this this happened. The Henley is now finished, although I'm still knitting the pattern again. Um, but the design of the Henley is finished. It's finalized. The testers are done. I've just got to make a few um, additions to the pattern through the course of the weekend. And then the pattern will be published next week. Now, let me tell you more about this. Um, you can decide how many buttons you want to have. You can have two, three, whatever. You can have one, doesn't matter. The pattern is written in such a way that you have the freedom to decide how many buttons you want to have. And then there are two, um, two choices for the bottom, the, uh, the bottom of the body and the bottom of the sleeves. 
I chose to do a turned up um, hem with mine. Let me lift it up for you like that. So this is a hem that's turned over and sewn up. So there's no ribbing or anything at the bottom of mine. It's just a turned up hem. But the pattern makes provision for a 2x2 two two rib that matches the 2x2 two two rib here against the neck. So if you want to do a ribbing, you can. It's in the pattern there as well. Um, the pattern is a blank pattern in the sense of that there's no stitch patterns. This is plain. This is stocking stitch. The majority of it, there's a little bit of rip here. And there's a garter tab here for the button bands. A garter button band. And that is it. So this pattern is very well suited to variegated yarn or stripes or if you've got a lot of stash that you want to use up and you want to stripe it this is ideal because the focus is absolutely on the color and the texture and not the stitch pattern per se so the the rebel henley the name is rebel henley the rebel henley will be published next week and um the Rebel hat will not be published next week. I just want to knit it one more time with um, something else and make this bit just a little bit more poofy, more slouchy. Um, I think that's going to look a little bit better if it's just a little bit more poofy. So I'll, I'll redo that one. So this hat is now in the project pipeline. It's, um, I will finish it within the next week or so. And the other thing that I still have in the pipeline is the V-neck sweater that we spoke about last week with the minimal cable detail. I have not casted that on yet. I have not started it. Um, my daughter from Sweden is here for just a few more days. They're leaving next week, Wednesday. They're flying back to Sweden. So I've just pushed everything on the back burner and I've only done what I wanted to do. And most of it has been for the little grandchild. So, um, in this week, um, I finished the, I can't remember whether I finished it this week or last week, but anyway, I still got to finish it off. I made another hosen mutts with Naughty Habit. Um, this was her light fingering, and I used a double strand because I wanted a double knit yarn, so I worked this one in a double strand fashion, and then... Last week I showed you um, a very light skein of yarn from Volen Fluss and I thought I was going to use that for a little sweater but I didn't. I actually quickly ordered two skeins of yarn from Mincy from Naughty Habits to make a little sweater for this. Now this was so so funny. I started the sweater in the car after I finished the hat. And by the time that we um, sat in front of the TV last night, I actually had the entire body finished. All that was left was the sleeves. And I looked at that sweater and I thought, you know, Sweden is cold. Sweden is very cold. I should actually have made this thicker. So I kid you not, I frogged the entire sweater. All of it. And I did it again last night watching the cricket I don't want to talk about the cricket the cricket was so depressing last night anyway so I made her another little Henley with a double strand so um, and this is very nice and thick because when I ordered the two skeins from Mincy for the sweater I actually ordered the double knit base and I doubled that up on six millimeter needles so there's another little Henley for Miss Abigail I'm just gonna do the sleeves today this is also gonna have a little turnover hem at the bottom it's rolling at the moment it's gonna look like that <clears throat> I made a little scallop so yeah this one I'm gonna finish today I'm just gonna knit the sleeves and put in the hem and do the finishing so look how nice this looks now together isn't that sweet this is the colorway Roderberg that Mincy has this is one of the few colors that she actually repeats 
and this one I don't know if she repeats it but this one was called um, early I think early blossom something like that so yeah this was what happened in my week I actually did knit with that light colored yarn because what happened was my daughter said to me mom I need to get cowls for Abigail because Abigail is now starting preschool when they go back and one of the items that she has to bring to school every day is a cowl. They don't allow loose long scarves, they want cowls. So um, that mustard that I had on the first handle that I made for her on the sleeves, I actually made a little cowl of that. And then I um, just got this crazy idea in my head to make a hooded cowl for her. And that is what I did with that light colored yarn from Volen Fluss. It's a beautiful color. It's got little bits of gray and little very, very soft bits of plum in there. I think she called it soft autumn or autumn something. So I made this just as a prototype. It's not pretty. It's a prototype. So it's a cowl at the bottom and then there's a little hood for Abigail. So I'll fit this on her tomorrow. We're going there tomorrow. And then I'll see what it's like. My idea for this is to make the bottom bit a little bit flared at the bottom, the cowl bit, so that it sits on the shoulders and it keeps the chest warm. So I'm going to fit it tomorrow, <clears throat> pardon me, and this just check my measurements and see if my line of thinking is right. And then this will also, it's a project in the pipeline. Abigail's hooded cowl. I'll probably just call it that. Abigail's who did cow. So you can see this is a prototype. There's nothing fancy to it at all. I didn't even do an edge here. It's just stocking stitch that's rolling over. I just want to check the measurements tomorrow and check the concept and see how it sits. And then I'll perfect it and knit it again. And then this one will come out as well. So this is another project in the pipeline that happened just by accident. Okay. And then, yeah. The um, the lock cabin patches has been on the back burner since my daughter got here. I have done very little on that. Um, I'll get going on that as soon as they've returned to Sweden. Then my life will become normal again. And um, I will spend most of my working days working on lock cabin patches. And my knitting will then again be for late afternoons and evenings and weekends in front of the TV. Yeah, so that is what is happening. Okay, now let's talk about um, this little hat. The question and answer. The question was asked, how do you come up with a new design? How does your mind work? And I actually find it quite difficult to answer. More often than not, I actually think 99% of the time I design something because I need the item or I want the item. It's either a want or a need, it depends. It is because I have a need to wear it or to gift it or whatever. Somebody needs it, like the hat. I just wanted a hat. And sure, I could have um, used one of my old patterns. But let me tell you a little secret. It's extremely difficult for me to knit or crochet from a pattern. I really, really battle to use a pattern. Um, there are a few uh, that I can tell you that I've used and the hose and mats for the babies is, is one of them um, I memorize it very fast and then I put the pattern down and I just cruise on my own for me to work from a pattern line by line is virtually impossible I just it, it drives me insane I don't enjoy it it stifles my creativity um, I really don't like it I would much rather grab the yarn and start something just on a whim 
than go back to a pattern that I've used or that I've designed. So when I thought I wanted a hat, I didn't, the, 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 there was no option of let me go for an old pattern. It, it wasn't in my head. Um, it, it doesn't come into my head. It's just, I need a hat, let me knit a hat. And I design it as I go along. So in my mind, I, had a, I just had this idea of a very broad ribbing. And the measurement that I had in my mind was 10 centimeters. And I was happily knitting the ribbing in the car, thinking, okay, when it comes to 10 centimeters, then I'll decide what to do next. And when it got to 10 centimeters, I looked at it and I thought, this is so light and so airy. I actually need to give it a little bit more um, body or weight. Let me double it up. So I continued until I had a ribbing for 20 centimeters. And then I just knitted the, um, the cast on edge. I just caught the cast on edge and I joined it. And then I thought, okay, now what am I going to do? So I thought I wanted a little bit of slouch or poof on top of the ribbing. And it was a thumb suck of how much I need because I don't know. So I increased the stitches with um, a quarter, 25%. And I thought, let me go for about five centimeters. Then I should be mm -hmm. able to do the crown decrease and it will fit. Um, luckily, those are not guesswork as, as, as much as it is really just experience. I, I know the measurements that it should be more or less to work. So I knitted in stocking stitch for about five centimeters and then I started the crown and I just felt like playing. With my other hats, I don't have one close by, I don't think. There's always hats lying around in this house. Now that I need one, there isn't one. There's one over there. I think now there isn't. Um, I normally decrease the crown on one side so it makes like the swirly stripes in. But this time I decided, I decided to uh, decrease on both sides going in with a little bit in the middle and make like a little star again. So I did that. It's, um, you can see I decreased here and that, I'm stupid now, this side and that side. And then there's two stitches in, the, in, in between the decreases that run in, that makes a little star. And when I was finished, I thought, mm, I like it. It's quite comfy. I'm going to wear it a lot with this jersey because I like a matching hat, even though my family thinks I'm queer. I don't care. And then I thought, okay, the 25% increase wasn't enough. I should have gone more. So, and I really need a black hat. I really, really need a black hat. So I've actually quickly ordered some um, black yarn from Colorspun. And I'm going to redo it and increase the stitches more for this little bit on the top. I want to make it a little bit more slouchy, a little bit more poofy. But, um, and then I, then what my thinking, what always happens is how much value can I add into this pattern? I like to give options for people in patterns to make it really worth their while purchasing the pattern. So in this case, I'm going to do the pattern for fingering weight yarn as well as double knit as well as Aaron, three yarn weights to choose from and I'm gonna have uh, multiple sizes as well baby child teen and adult so there will be four sizes to choose from and three yarn weights to choose from so that is what happens I, I just I have a need hello Maslow <laughs> What made me think of Maslow now? You know, you find Maslow in everywhere. If you start studying, 
Maslow creeps up everywhere. You find him in economics, you find him in psychology, you find him in business management. If Maslow says that there's always a need, and once you satisfy the one need, a new need will arise, and it's really like that. So yeah, I satisfied the need for my hat, and now there's a need for me to make a pattern with different sizes and different yarn bases. So it's always a case of I want to make something because I need it or because I want to gift it to somebody. And I'm very unwilling to work from a pattern, so I start knitting or I start crocheting and see where I end up. I frog a lot. I really do. I am not scared of frogging. Yesterday I didn't even flinch when I thought I should have made this thicker. I just frogged the entire little jersey <laughs> and I started over. So that's where my designs come from. I have a need and I don't want to use a pattern and then I just start. I seldom, seldom have a design planned out. I don't plan the entire thing before the time. I just know I want to make a sweater and then I sit and think, okay, how do I want the neck to be? Is it going to be a round neck? Is it going to be a cowl neck? Isn't it a polo neck? Isn't it going to be a v-neck? And then I start. Um, this v-neck thing that is planned now is actually planned well and it's because I had a request for, from somebody that said, Please design a V-neck sweater with raglan sleeves with very minimal cable detail. And I said, what do you mean with minimal cable detail? And the person said, they want a small cable running down here on the raglan increase, on the raglan line, and here under the arm on the side. So I said, okay, fine, I'll do that. I can work with that. If you give me that, then I will design something like that. And, and yeah, normally I don't plan it out like that. I just start and it grows as I'm working on it. It grows, it develops, it changes. I frog often and I think, oh yeah, this, this is cool, but I could have done it that way. And then I change it. I frog it and I change it. So that's how my design mind works. Okay. So this funeral that I've attended on Thursday, it wasn't a funeral really, it was a memorial service. And um, my husband's cousin, um, he did the talking in this memorial service and it was so beautiful how he spoke of his father. And something that he said really stuck with me and my husband and I had a long discussion on it last night actually you know this man was old he was he was 80 something and how difficult is it to to speak about somebody like that in a couple of minutes really I mean, it's a life that's been there for 80-something years, and that entire life, you have to sum it up in a couple of minutes. And something that he said, he said, my father always put people first. People were more important to him than arrangements. People were more important to him than institutions. People were more important to him than rules and regulations. He placed people first. And that's the legacy that he left with his children. And it was beautiful to me. It was really so beautiful to me to sit and listen to that and to think, wow, this is the legacy that this man left behind, is that he valued people above everything else. And then I sat in the car on the way home and I thought, if I were to die today, what would my legacy be? What will people say on my funeral if they have to sum up my entire life in a couple of minutes? I don't know, and I don't want your opinion on that either. <laughs> don't tell me what you think. Um, 
I'm not fishing for for comments on that. This is just what I've been mulling about in my head. We've got to really think. Uh oh, no. We have to really think of the things we say and the things we do and how it impacts other people. We cannot... Um, the legacy we leave behind is ultimately determined by how we treat people. The things we do, the accomplishments that we achieve through our lifetime, the degrees, the, the achievements, um, none of that really counts. What really counts is how we treat people. Because that is what they will remember. They will remember how we made them feel. They will remember what we said. They will remember whether we treated them with respect. Nothing else really matters. And that is my slow life musing for this week. What will our legacy be if we were to pass away and somebody has to stand up at a memorial service and in a couple of minutes sum up the entire life of the person who passed away just that it's it's all about how we've treated the people so i've got a food for thought Remus, stop it sorry about that yeah that's my slow life musing for the week. How do we treat the people? What will the legacy be? Interesting. Okay, we have a nice interview with Mincy from Naughty Habit. I decided this week to interview Mincy. I work with her yarn often. I like um, Mincy's type of colors. Um, I'm a sucker for variegated yarn. Although it, it usually bites me in the ass often. But um, I'm really a sucker for variegated yarn. And I love Mincy's colorways. I love her variegated yarns. Um, this is Mincy's yarn. And this Rudeberg is Mincy's yarn. And this is just, it is so beautiful. It is really speckles and oh, it's just divine. So yeah, I've got an interview with Mincy lined up for you. I hope you will enjoy it. I found it very interesting. I really enjoy doing the interview with her. And um, you must have a blessed Saturday. What will I be able to show you next week? I have no idea. I hope I will be able to show you a little bit of the V-neck sweater next week. And I'm definitely going to be crocheting this week a lot. But um, we'll see. I can plan my week and I can plan which projects I'm going to work on and it seldom works out. Um, I'm a little bit of a, um, what's the word, uh, impulsive nutter. <laughs> if I suddenly need something, I put everything else down and I quickly do that and then the whole plan derails, but that's fine. That's also enjoyable. Life, life sometimes needs to be a little bit wild and unplanned. Yes, it does. Enjoy your week. Have a good one and I'll see you next week. My guest today is Mincy from Naughty Habit. Mincy, welcome to the Slow Saturday podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invite and thank you to all the listeners and viewers. It's good to be with you guys. I've got some questions from you that we put together between me and a team of my testers. And um, I would like to ask them to you so that we can find out more about Naughty Habit and you and the business and everything else. Are you ready? I'm ready. You can go ahead. Okay. What made you decide to become an indie dyer? How did that happen? Um, it feels like I had, I had two lives before this. <laughs> um, I was the typical corporate wife traveled the world with my husband and spent time in America and in Dubai 
raised three kids, and when the last one left for the U.S. to go study there, um, I was like, okay, now I'm at home. What am I going to do? And I've always had a love for fiber and, and textile, the textile industry. I had a very long time ago, I had a, a little shop called Creative Textiles. They um, we kept over-dyed t-shirting and, and um, clothing fabric. And then the love for and the what do you call it? The interest in spinning was like, okay, now's my time. Now I can go actually have time to sit and to learn something that I wanted to do after the kids all left home. So I started to spin. Um, bought myself a spinning wheel and I taught myself and a little bit of help here and there with spinning. And then I ended up with these bobbins of spun uncolored yarn and cream is not really my color. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you do with like six bobbins of spun yarn? And um, I actually called or uh, sent a uh, WhatsApp to Carlay and I said, Carlay, how do you dye this stuff now? Because I bought my wool from her. <laughs> and she actually gave, gave me a couple of pointers and I dyed this. It was um, non-superwash at that stage. And then the bug just biked. It was like, okay, this is something I like. This is something I can do. Um, I didn't realize it's that hard work, but it was it was nice. It was it's still a, a it's still hard work, lots of hard work, but I, I'm I'm enjoying myself. Do you still spin today? Um, the wheel is here. I I would rather spin before I take up a crochet hook or anything. And the thing needle that is my first love. Um, I would love one day to participate in Tour de Fleece, that is really something that I would love to do. But it's um, at this stage, it's just the time, it's it's a little bit of a, a thing. But I think it's something that I always tease it. I say, Yeah, I will start knit and, and crochet when I retire. But I don't know when that's going to happen. <laughs> How long has not it, um, have it been in business now? Um, about three and a half years. And we started in 2019, you know, wow. January of 2019. And how do you decide which colors you're going to dye? Do you have a fixed color chart that you try to keep to? Do you just do what you feel like on the day? Where does the ideas um, come from? I, I have very few colors that I actually can repeat because I am very lazy and I know that is one of my the, the cons of not the habit yarn is that I have a I can't really repeat colorways because I don't write down recipes. Um, big reason for that is just that I stand in front of the pan and I'm like, this looks blank. Let's put something this with it, and then I have to go write it down. I'm not going to remember what I did, mm. and and to write down as go, it feels like I'm like restricted in my little bit of creativity that I get. Mm. And, I, and I'm not a factory. Um, I have a, sorry, I have a lot of respect for someone like, like Oren of, of Miss Lamont who can pump it out one color, skein of the skein of the skein, and they look exactly the same, more or less exactly the same, as, as close as exactly as what you can get at hand eye yarn. I just can't do that. Um, I, I stand there and I'm like, you know what, the stock looks but bear on something that's natural. Come, let's do some browns and creams and a little bit of gold or whatever. Um, I, I just, there, there are the, the Amalfi Drive, which is my navy, I can repeat. Um, the Rudderbach, which is the maroon, I can repeat. But it's the recipe is not written down anyway, it's just in my head. Mm. Um, so I, I, I love, because that's, that's my creativity at the moment. I don't have time to knit, I don't have time to crochet. So I can't stand in front of a diet pan and just follow the rules. Mm. I just can't. That's amazing. It's so just, if you do things like the mystery boxes, where, where does the inspiration for that come from? How do you decide on the colors for that? Do you look at pictures? Do you look at what? How does it happen? Yeah, the, the, the mystery boxes, I, I don't like to call them mystery boxes because... Um, that was one of the things that I researched quite a bit before we actually started the yarn club last year. Um, I, I don't want it to be, I call it a yarn dump. Something that didn't sell to me is a mystery box because you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, yeah, 
the, the, the clients have a say in the color palette mm -hmm. and I only dye how many boxes have been ordered. I mean, you know that the, the soft box for four to three went out on, um, when was it, Tuesday? No, Thursday, Thursday morning. The, the soft boxes went out and I had like maybe 10, 12 calls yesterday. Do you have any more left? Are there any more available? Is, there, is this available on your website? And I'm sorry, it's not. I dye 18 boxes per color. If there's 15 that was ordered, I dye 15 per color. Um, it's just, it's specifically dyed for the soft club or the yarn club. So it's, it, to me, it's not a mystery box. Mm. The, the, the clients have got to say in which color palette they want. Um, and in, in the yarn club case, they actually have a say in which base they want because every quarter has got another base. Uh, but how do you base. decide on the colors to put in that box? Where does um, the idea come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's something that just stands there. I've got the color palette. So I know that, say, masala and chili, just for interest sake, is going to be reds and oranges because that's the color that, that, that the, the word masala and chili kind of, and rusts kind of bring in my head. Um, but the whole theme is, is I've, got a, I've got a good team behind me. They, we sit, we, we've already booked the date for next year, somewhere in October. We're going to sit and we're going to, there, there are, ideas flying around of what next year's theme is going to be like. But we, we sit and we, we talk. We get ourselves some food and some nice coffee for a Saturday morning. And, and then we sit and we talk about the themes. And if we've got the themes, then as they talk, I write colors down. Because I, I know the, the dye colors that I use, the, 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 the dye base that I use. And I, they talk and I just like, okay, this can work. This color can work in that, in that, in that theme. Um, I, my, my big thing is that I, I want my clients to have a choice when it comes to their colors. Um, if, if you're not a cream person, then you've got a choice not to order the cinnamon and vanilla box. Mm. Um, if you're not a orange person, then you don't order the masala and chili box because those are the colors that, that come in my mind of what masala and chili would look like. Now, the people that you've just mentioned, who are they? Are they friends? Are they crafters? Are they family? Do they um, knit and crochet? Yes, they do. They, um, well, the, the, the one that's my, my biggest supporter is Louis, my husband, and he does not crochet in that I can promise you. But he's, he's the Mr. Naughty behind, and he calls him Mr. Naughty because he is naughty. He's always been naughty. Um, He's the one that is my biggest supporter. He's the one that does my um, admin for me. He does all the um, the, the clients who's on um, payment plans. He does all that admin end of the month, send all that, all the statements, make sure that we've got all the payments in, things, stuff like that. Um, and then I've got um, Katreida from Itzy Klein. Itzy Klein started, she, was, she actually made, um, what do you call it, Bella? Well, Bella, ear earrings. Earrings. And then, um, yeah, and then she um, sat with me one day. She's also my software developer. That's actually her real, her real job in, in real life. So she does my work, my website for me. And then she said to me, she said to me, but I can make the stitch markers that can go into the boxes. And then Itzy, Itzy moved from, Itzy claimed moved from, from, from uh, earrings to stitch markers. So um, she's with me, um, she's a very creative young girl, and I, I always say that um, if, if, the young, if the young woman of South Africa can knit and crochet and weave now like she can spin, she does, she does everything. So she, the only craft she doesn't do is mosaic. <laughs> and she just did an unbelievable um, embroidery pillow case with that, um, it's like an ad on your, on your, feet, on your scissors beautiful crochet, um, um, embroidery. So she she's talks to us as well, a lot of things that work, you know, the, the bringing the, the tech world with the yarn world together. So I'm very fortunate actually to have found her and she actually found me, I didn't found her. She um, contacted me here in lockdown um, for a, um, a dye order for her dad. She wanted a specific yarn dye for her dad. She wanted to knit a pullover for her dad. And she said to me, my dad is a real Afrikaans woman. 
It only, only weighs green, green, brown, and blue. <laughs> And I want, I want the young man who can get the pool over that he can fit all his check shirts underneath. And I got that uh, for her, and that's how we started talking. And she got onto the onto the naughty team. And then um, I'm now Mutt. Um, she's from Blue Spoon. She does all my my little cookies that you get when you buy classes for me. But she's also an unbelievable marketer. She's that was also her bro of marketing, and that's it's her big. In, in corporate life. So she sits and she says, Minty, okay, let's do a campaign for this or what to do. So she does a lot of those posters that you see on Facebook and, and Instagram with, you, with the color palettes and stuff. That's that's on else work. So I've, I've got a really good team behind me. And then, Yonita, you know, I will get on the phone and I said, Yonita, will this work for a little thing? Or Sonia from... Um, designs by Sophia. Will this work for crochet? Test this for me, please. Test that uh, um, thing for me. When I when I um, um, started with the, the speckled clusters, I gave them this guide and I said, just crochet this for me or knit this for me and see how it works. Do we need to make it a bigger class, the, the color pop? So um, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate to, to have those goals in my life. And then obviously my husband is and the three kids in America, they are always, every day, Mom, that was great. What picture was that? Where did you get that? And it was, I'm like, constantly getting comments from them in the U.S. So that's that's also good. Oh, that's amazing. Now, mm. are there no plans for you and Mr. Naughty to move to America at some stage? Or are the kids there just temporarily? No, they're probably there permanently. We, our grandchild, our granddaughter is there as well. Um, we are going actually in August um, for three weeks. We're going to meet her. We're going to be there for her first birthday. So that's that's going to be very special. Um, the youngest one is getting married as well. So he will. his plans are that he wants to become an international teacher. He wants to travel the world and go to all the international schools the way that he was brought up. He says, can't understand that you want to be in a school where everyone looks the same. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's used to a school with 96 nationalities. Mm. Um, he's just a child. He's a global child, and that's, that's the type of schools that he wants to teach in. He graduated end of last year. He's teaching now at a special ed school in the U.S. Um, just for a year or two to get um, some experience, and then they will travel to the American International Schools right over the world. Um, my daughter is still studying. She's doing a PhD um, in biomedical engineering, and the chances of her coming back to South Africa are very, very slim as well. So we'll we'll probably go for six months at a time. But at this stage, Louis' mom is still alive. My mom is still alive. They both struggle with dementia. And um, at this stage, it's, it's where we need to be for them. Hmm. That makes sense. Okay, so what is your favorite color? Navy. <laughs> Navy. I'm, I'm a, navy and, and maroons. I'm a winter girl. Pink, navy, and maroon. Any shade of pink to maroon and any shade of blue up to navy. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Got it on. Did you see that? <laughs> and what inspires you? What What do you need to just feel your creativity and your energy to really get up and say, yes, I'm going to do this now? Um... I love, I love nature. Nature is it's one of the the big things that I, as many of you know, I grew up on a farm. So um, for me, outside was always the the best. And things. Someone said to me one day, but I don't like green. And I'm like, how can someone not like green? The whole world outside is green. <laughs> I don't think there's a color that I don't like, but it's um, it's just the the. The things that that talk to me is definitely nature. I, I can I can drive outside and it's like, oh, look at that sunset. That would make beautiful colors. Yeah. Um, a tree with different colors of green in it. You know, like as the leaves turn, that the, the one side of the leaf is a different color than the other side. Um, in the Middle East, there are um, roads that there's got there's no but no vegetation on it. It's just rocks absolute rocks and 
my, my mom came to visit us once and she we were dr driving through it and she looked at this and she says but isn't this beautiful and i was like you know what mom it is actually you don't have to have green to be beautiful if this is brown it's like 27 shades of brown they say Ireland has got 101 shades of green, yeah, but I think that the, the, the mountains of the Middle East has got 101 shades of brown and gray. And, and this nature, the, the nature is beautiful, and you can do anything from nature, any color. Okay, so let me see if I've got all the questions. I think I do. What I want to know still is... Um, do we have something planned for Christmas that we can look forward to and start hinting at the family what we want for Christmas? You know what, Hilda? I'm, I'm a big... I'm going to put myself a bit out here. I'm a big... Um, what is the word that I'm looking for? I don't want to do things that other people have done. There are so many dyes in South Africa that actually do like Advent calendars. For December. So I don't see myself ever actually do an Advent calendar mm -hmm. in December itself um, because I know it's something that has been done and, and if there's a place for that, that's not what I'm saying. There's definitely a place for an Advent calendar, it's very popular, but give the people who have started it before me the due. And yeah. Mr. Mott and all these other guys that have done it, that, that's, their, that's their thing. I'm not going to do that, never ever. Um, that's why last year I did a 25 days in July um, with a brain from yarn, the little box that I did. I remember. Uh, yeah, and I didn't want to call it Christmas in July because it's not Christmas in July. That's why we called it 25 days in July. Um, that's that's what I that I did last year. This year, I don't know if some of you have seen it. We are actually doing 20 days of scrappy socks in October. Um, it's a box that I've put together 20, 15 grams um, that you will get. And then I've paired up with um, Colors of Amalfi. Um, Mariki is the sole importer of the Tulip um, knitting needles in South Africa, the Tulip brand. And um, if you go on the website at the moment, it, it will be on, it's in the front page, the um, Socktober box. So you get 20, 15 grams. Um, yeah. Plus a project bag, plus one of the new specific um, cozies that I've actually had material printed for this October cozies. And then you can add on 100 gram skeins, um, as many as you want to, in three colors just a, a navy, a gray, and a, a natural. And then we paired with Mariki, and you can add on knitting needles for sock needles if you want to knit socks with it. If you don't want to knit socks with it, you've I've got a 3.25. 3.5 and 3.75 that you can add on for a shawl knitting or even a sweater knitting and then also crochet hooks for if you want to crochet the yarn so that's that's all add-ons that you can that you can add on to the box um, when I come back from the US that's what I will be dying um, I have sold I think guys I think this morning was the, the sale like this box number 36 Wow that's amazing. So um, if you count that times 20 scans, it's quite a lot of a lot of dying. That, that's, that's gonna happen. And um, I actually think that we're gonna cap it um, next week. Um, because I can't see myself get ready or die like a thousand little fifteen gram scans. Because I don't um, I, I do all dying myself. There's no one else that dies under the naughty name, it's just me. Um, I've got someone that helps me four times a week that just comes in and help clean and she, she steams my skeins and sometimes turn it or make my skeins and you, you know that I, I buy my yarn in cones and I don't, I make my own, I open my, my own skeins just because I like the shorter um, circumference of my own skeins and not the big mold skeins. I actually love the length of your, your skeins. I really do. Yeah, it's a 150, 150 centimeter diameter. Mm. Oh, well, it's a circumference, that's the word. Um, the the mold skeins are all 180 centimeters. And I personally don't like it. Mm. Firstly, because very few of the swifts available in South Africa can actually take a 180 centimeter mm. skein. And secondly, for me, it's better to have a shorter skein in the dye pack than what it is to have a longer skein. I 
do get more black spots on a longer scale, although it's it's thinner in the, in the pad itself, it fits longer, it's like there's less yeah. yarn, but it's just because it's so long, it's more, I don't know, I just can't dye the long ones. I actually do sometimes buy from from the more ready scaled yarns if I buy smaller quantities, but then I rescale them. That's interesting. I That's always rescale my yarn. The, the guys from the mall think I'm very weird, but I actually put the big scale, because the umbrella scales, normal umbrella scales do take the 180 yeah. scale. And I put that on an umbrella scale and I rescale it back to my normal scale, which is 150. So, um, I, as I said, I do buy sometimes from already scaled yarn, especially if it's a new base, if I want to test it first before I buy bigger quantities. But then I, then I rescale all of it. Which base is the most popular in your shop? Um, if you want to go to just yarn itself, um, the four ply, the four ply 100% uh, merino light fingering. I do have a theory about that, um, why it is so popular. Um, I think it's got something to do with the construction. It's a, it's a, it's a familiar terminology construction that, that people know, they know the four ply name. Mm. And and it's got nothing to do with the thickness of the yarn, as I said to you before. It's just it's just the construction of the yarn itself. But I think that's one of the reasons. It is a very nice yarn. It's a very you've knitted it with yourself. It's a very nice weight yarn for South African weather, I think. Yeah. Um, but I if I do percentage wise, I think my queso base, my seventy five twenty five, is probably the base that I sell the most. Um, because it is a yarn that can transfer from socks to, yeah. to um, garments as well. Yeah. And it's, um, I've actually had a post in the week, I don't know if you saw it, that it is actually the, the most popular base in the UK and the US that the indie dyes dye. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, if you go to someone like, if you, look, if you um, K. Jones from by Three Bears, um, they are huge podcasters in, in the UK, that's all she does. Because she knits and she said she can always knit a pair of socks with that, but she can also knit or crochet a blanket. So if she dyes something or buys something, she likes a 75-25 because it's so versatile in everything that you can do. And um, I've actually started um, really hard promoting people too. And that's part of the, the 20 days, the sock, scrappy sock box as well. Um, to use it not just for socks. It's, it's a beautiful base. And for a very long time in South Africa, till about a couple of months ago, it's the only ply 100% fingering yarn that we've got in South Africa. I because I don't buy it for socks. I've got a lot of socks in my in my um in my cupboard. So if I buy fingering, I buy it for garments. I love mm -hmm. um, knitting with fingering weight for summer tops. Merino fingering weight for summer tops. I love that. But in the winter time, you know, I want thicker, and then I easily double thicker. it up. I I did this one with two strands. I just mm. double it up, and it yeah. makes for a lovely but, thick yarn. But, but you know, we we did in South Africa. We the only, the only fingerings we had was like the single fingering. Mm. The three. I'm, I'm talking about three hundred sixty meters on a hundred gram. Okay, that's a single. It's not a plied yarn. Mm. We 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 had the we had still have the three hundred sixty meters. The merino linen, the 90 percent merino, ten percent linen. It's a single. Mm. It's not a plied yarn. Mm. So there was no 360 meters on 100 grams available in South Africa that's plied. Mm. And I love so, plied. I don't like single ever. I know you do. So the, the case of yarn, the 7525, is a free ply, 366 meters. It's the perfect fingering yarn. It's a very nice yarn, yeah. Very, very nice yarn. And, and I, mean, I actually, I'll show you, I've, I've got a, uh, a cardigan here. Um, that is, it was just hanging on my chair. Um, it's actually knitted in that. This is the... the now, who the knitted that? Ah, I've got friends in, friends in places. <laughs> <laughs> You've got very good friends. 
This is especially a very good print because it's half fisherman's rib the whole book. It's beautiful. This is this. Yeah, it's this Tria. Um, it's uh, Andrea Maury's Tria that came out the end of last year. And I actually dyed this, yarn, this um, yarn especially in its case. Um, to show people that it is the most perfect yarn to 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 knit because it's got this this three ply, mm. a little bit highly twisted. So it's and squishy with the mm. with the, the fisherman's rib. This was um, actually knitted by Ida Gottrieper. So it's um, I, I said I've got I've got friends in high places. You absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely do. And the cowl that you've got on, who made that? This is Jermita. It's actually the two by two cow that's on my website. Um, it's a cow that she knitted with um, my three ply DK. It's uh, it's on the website. It's a download pattern on the website. Um, is that you, Anita Mir? That's you, Anita Mir from Jornet. Cool. Yeah. yeah, you are blessed. You've got good friends. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was very blessed. And you know what? But very important to me as, as well, and, and, and I think you as a designer will enjoy that. Um, I do buy the patterns that's on, on the website I've bought from uh, from the de designers, either Jonita or Sonia, um, but I do pay them for each pattern that I've actually sold. They get a, a amount of money. Um, I don't charge a lot of, for my download. It's only 45 rand a pattern, but a big percentage, 90% of that goes to them every every month. And, That's and they will, they, I will, I mean, even if, even if it's 100 rand, 120 rand a month, but it's something that I just feel it is, they need to get that because I know how long it takes to, to design. And, and it's not just, Pay them a once off that amount of money. I don't. I don't think that is right. That's just me. Mm. That's wonderful. That's amazing, actually. As a designer, I can tell you that's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's. It, I mean, the, they, they both buy a lot of yarn from me, so they've got like like a tab running. So that money just goes off the tab. But at, at, at the end of the day, it is something that they get back for spending that time. Well, that's fantastic. Well, you must enjoy your holiday. Thank and you. I hope it's going to be a blessed one. Oh, look at this now. You must enjoy it, and I hope you're going to bring some special yarn back, even if it's just to give to a friend to knit for you. You have to go yarn shopping while you're there. Well, so, I, I, I have, have to, to tell, tell you, my, my son actually lives in Northampton, which is the home base of Webs, the very well-known Webs shop in the U.S. And Webs was very clever. When um, I think when internet started, they actually registered the domain yarn.com as their website. <laughs> so um, I will definitely visit webs. It is huge. It is big. That would be amazing. I would yeah, I would do the same thing if I would go there. Yeah, my son walks past it every day to work, so he always takes picture for him. <laughs> To me. <laughs> oh. Well, have a blessed Saturday, have a good weekend, and Thank we you. hope you enjoy your holiday and come back full of inspiration for new colorways. Thank, Thank you so, so much, Yula. Thank, Thank you for everyone, everyone supporting not, not to the last three now. Yes, we were really blessed, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I love your yarn. <laughs>